she has been a developer of one oer that is mooc for oe for bw that is open education for better world she has guided over 20 mphil dissertations she has to her credit contribution in more than 15 books for chapters dr deepika was invited as resource person in more than 10 academic events of national and international level she has published 15 plus research articles in various journals and presented above 40 papers in seminars symposium and conferences of national and international level she has been a member of editorial board or reviewer for reputed research journals such as journal of inclusive educational research and asian journal of distance education we heartily welcome you madam uh, i request you to Thank deliver you so your session okay i request you to deliver your session on oer and creative commons over to you madam thank you so much ma'am and a very warm good afternoon to all today i'm going to share my views and some of my experience uh, with regard to oer and creative commons so may i allow to share my screen yes madam you you okay. share your screen thank Please. you so much ma'am so uh, before going into the discussions of uh, open educational resource first of all it is very much important that you must know about what digital resources means i hope during pandemic period everybody of us uh, uses different kind of digital resources because we were engaged in online teaching and learning process because we are distant from our learners and uh, we need to deliver our sessions or we need to contact our learners through digital mode yeah. so i have one question for you it's a small activity uh, i'll put it in the chat box kindly open the link and answer the question that is related to digital resources so you all will have to click on the link from the link you can direct it to one another window and there you can give your answer it's answer garden it's a very simple question because you all are teachers and you must have used different kind of digital resources because oer uh, here is concerned with different kind of learning resources so click on the link please according to you uh, what digital resources means or what type of digital resources you ever used in your classrooms so here is a link in the chat box you can click over the link yes online books or database right anything else so everybody should uh, join me because it's self very good youtube academia like for research financial management right it it it's, it can be an open course where online books video mentimeter mentimeter is a, a tool to engage our learners yes documentaries yes videos and youtube technology based all right so i hope during your classroom you have used these kind of digital resources right and these digital resources helps help us a lot during our teaching learning process because a uh, traditionally what happened uh, during face to face contact we were dependent upon a uh, traditional conventional method of teaching but during this pandemic and moreover uh, 21st century we need to be dependent upon the online material also so i'll see some more answers yes uh, there are pdfs available youtube videos available mentimeter so uh moocs are there videos blogs are there right databases are there so it means uh you must have used these kind of digital resources now the question arises 
whether these digital resources are free or open for that purpose i need one more engagement i think you must have used the google classroom and to engage our learner we must have used the jamboard so i'll quickly add share a link of the jamboard kindly give some examples so it is in your chat box kindly join me in jamboard yes so i hope you got the link so you can join the jamboard with me so what you have to write here is examples of digital resources you have given some resources now kindly give some particular resources like what you are using in your classroom in, for your subject like for science for mathematics uh, for social studies for english literature for english poems what kind of digital resources you are using in your classroom and are these resources are open and free ma'am access is denied it is asking for permission okay i have given the permission i think link is there i'll again check i'll again put the link in the chat box i'll and able to open okay i'll see so when we say you need access uh, okay. request the access okay okay ma'am maybe it is not public no now i made it public ma'am okay yeah okay. okay. so uh, now you can click on the third link it's public no you don't need to install it can directly use through your google chrome now it is available ma'am yeah thank you so yes you can give your answers what you have to do is you just have to mention the digital resources which are available online and which you use in your classroom with respect to your subjects like social studies sciences mathematics not just youtube video or ebooks particular digital resources and also tell that our resource is open and free someone has written yes uh, it means these resources are open and free so 39 people have joined the google jamboard so you can write you can use the sticky notes here if you are not able to write you can click on the sticky notes and on sticky notes you can give your answers Uh, are you able to access the jambo because no. 38 uh, people have joined um, it is not allowing to edit yeah okay. ma'am it's not allowing for editing okay so, okay it's open I'll, but not allowing yes, okay okay yeah. now try ma'am now try okay Yeah, yes now you can add it yes uh, you can use sticky note yes no still ma'am it is sh showing view only okay i have given the right name somebody is writing somebody is using so i have now available ma'am yes now we can uh, yeah so you can write through using pen or you can use sticky note sticky note will be uh, beneficial if you want to write something so uh, if you check on the of your left side fourth point is the stick yes sticky note you can write your views just write the digital online resource which are available for you in relation to your subjects yes journal database okay that is basically online journal database open access journals swayam yes very good shodh ganga right swayam is basically uh, nowadays using for mooc for a for particular course or for, for a particular uh, you know uh, subject okay shodh ganga academia is basically uh, uh, it's a repository of uh, different research 
articles coursera yes it is a lms platform quizzes and games e learning apps so edmodo is lms uh kindly if anybody give a particular example of some website or some resource like you have given the swayam you have given e parshala edx right i have already given one that is library.it i used it to give a mock on cyber security okay okay very nice ma'am so i'll refresh okay canvas canvas is lms platform yes but uh, there are various moocs which are available free of cost moodle yes nowadays moodle is very uh, popular fine now can anybody tell me are these resources are open and free what do you think you can ask actually you can actually yeah, yeah. some of the resources are free like swayam is uh, also asking for certification charges later on yeah. maybe library.it also some initial basic course are free uh, yes. but when you go for advanced courses uh, they are paid money yeah same with coursera there are some courses are free which are initial courses but other are paid yeah are you able to access all the courses without paying amount No, so there no. are some yeah there are some courses where you need to pay some amount or there are some uh, courses where you need to uh, take your subscription right so these are some of the digital resources examples and i think you are clear with that that all digital resources are not open and they are not free though they are open but sometimes it happens they are not free and though they are free but it it, it may be that they are not open for everyone so now thank you so much for your uh, kind participation i move to my slides so when we talk about digital learning resources i think ppt is visible to everyone yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. so these are the resources which are available online and for that we need internet right and these are such applications like some app because you have given the answer where you have mixed everything like apps are there software are there some programs are there some website are there and that are particularly meant to engage our learners and that is to engage the student in learning activities and support their learning goals and what happen when we talk about digital learning resources now there is a plethora of resources uh as per the different grades as per the different levels and age age appropriate resources are also there and you can also define as the material that has been created digitally or we can say we converting it analog material to a digital format so that is digital resources now i have asked earlier one question that are digital resources open and free and some of you have said that no it's not free some of that are free and some of that are not free I think have you heard about the joke about the Holy Roman Empire? There was one joke related to it that he was uh, it was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire. And same in the case of digital resources, or we can say OER, which now we are going to discuss that open educational resources. Though these are open, but we need some kind of there are some kind of restriction to use, to like, or to share this content. So. Uh, like uh, like holy roman emperor he was uh, it was not holy not roman not empire so same wise the free does not mean uh, you are you can freely use everything without the permission you need some kind of permission or you have to taken into consideration the different kind of licenses now here two terms are there free and open because before moving into the discussion of oer we need to clarify this these two terms now when we say free digital resources or free resources it means there is no required cost to assess the material but uh, there are many courses there are many type of material which require some fees or then then we cannot consider it as a, a free online resource so free basically mean there is no cost it does not mean that user may you also reuse modify or share the material so at that case we have to take into consideration the license whether uh, we have only cc license we will discuss later on after oer so here me that course is free but to share that course to use that material to modify that material 
you need some kind of permissions free only mean with respect to its fees now when i say when a resource is open open here mean user know that they can reuse and share the resource widely so open means the resource which are available online or likewise you can easily adopt it you can easily adjust it modify reuse recycle and share as long as they abide by the term of the creator so this thing we need to be very much clear that whosoever is the creator if he or she has given the right to reuse or uh, like the that uh, or to share the content then only you can share the content or reuse the content and that all the all the things will be clarified when we discuss about the cc license so i hope free and open terms are clear to you now have you heard about these terms open access open education open content open courseware open source software open education resource we everything is open so again i have already clarified the term open me you can use the material user know that they can e reuse and share the resources widely but with the permission of the creator now i think everybody must have heard these terms one or another way what open access mean when we say open access what does it mean can anybody tell me we usually say that it's open accessible openly it's it's provide openly i'm like um, sometimes it is open access journals you can uh, see the previous proceedings without registering in registration and logging into the system they are easily available for access read yes yes there are different kind of journals there are different kind of magazines which we can access easily and likewise we have open and distance learning we can say open education there are some open content there are open course where right a uh, globally open course where are used nowadays are using nowadays there are various kind of open so source software when i uh, ask the question about digital resources many of you has uh, written about some of the software so these are basically if you are able to use some software freely you can able to download that software it mean that is open source software they are not asking you for any kind of money or a charges so that are free to download likewise the very important concept for we people like for teachers are open educational resources though they are open but still some restrictions are there that we need to be clarify that what kind of restrictions uh, that that is imposed upon the user of that a particular resource and nowadays many more open things are available now we uh, when we talk about open access as ma'am has already told that there are different kind of open a uh, journal available which we can access different kind of open libraries are also there hello so yes ma'am yes uh, is there any problem ma'am no ma'am you please continue okay i think somebody is asking me so so when we uh, talk about open access it is basically a digital online free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions it mean we can use it but still we have to take into consideration the uh, restriction imposed there by the creator of that original creator so likewise that is directory of open access journal that ma'am has already told you doj so this is the uh, website we will go through it after the session so these are some of the open source software everybody is using free of cost like wordpress mozilla firefox google chrome is there blender is there open office linux we are using it so these are basically called as open source software because we can easily download it, it without any restriction now because when we talk uh, when we talk about the word open it mean it has changed the philosophy from closed to open movement now uh, earlier what happened everything was in the textbook more because internet was not in you know in a fashion world we can say you know much use so uh, in a traditional or conventional mode of teaching and learning we are more uh, dependent upon the teachers as, as well as the textbook or the content provided by the instructor but now 21st century is a digital century or we can say it is a ict based learning is there 
so everything this movement has shifted from closed to open movement or a open society so when we say open society it mean there are uh, uh, if we talk about in terms of technology or resources it mean that are easily available on internet or via internet so there are open societies there are open soft software open data are available open access is there open science open licenses and open educational resources now uh, when we talk about open educational resources it's like a shift earlier we were dependent upon the traditional uh, teaching learning material or teacher used to share the teaching learning material from the from his or her books to the students now the when we say sharing educational resources as oer or open educational resources it has paved the way for you know uh, knowledge sharing so it is available to all the student all the institution and all the faculty members and we can say we can use and we can reuse we can remix and we can share these resources easily now what is enabled oer like why nowadays why we are using oer because when we say oer it is open educational resources it can be in any format though it may be a images though may, may be it is in a documentary or a video anything that all comes under educational resources which are open and openly available and accessible through internet now what has enabled oer first of all because the philosophy has been changed if we uh, look around us if we look around the social scenarios the philosophy is changed earlier that was very autocratic type of system in the classroom no democracy was awarded if we talk about idealism now the pragmatism approach is now uh, using nowadays so oer because students are allowed to use the other resources beyond the classroom now students are not bound to use only those resources which are provided by their teachers they are free so because there is a shift in the philosophy or a idea of the education system now moreover everybody can easily afford the internet because at a minimum cost uh, internet facilities are available and if we talk about financial model there are different kind of financial model because some oer are totally free like some moocs are totally free uh, some certificates are also uh, free uh, we can get the certificate free of cost and moreover some need some kind of uh, financial uh, burden is there so that depend upon the the creator and next is because now we have different copywriting licensing system available earlier it was copyrighted material so we are not able, because under intellectual property right we cannot use any content without the permission but now there are some licenses which allow us to use and reuse the content and that comes under the creative commons licenses so these are uh, the little background like uh, why uh, what has enabled the oers now there is one self reflection activity for all of you just uh, ponder upon it uh, for one minute how open is your institution because when we talk about open courses when we talk about open resources it means somehow we have this question in our mind whether my institution is open so that i can open my course i can put my course on the oer commons or on any platform which is accessible globally to everyone so just have a thought over it that how open is your institution it's interesting to know that even some open universities are not so because they are they are asking for money for the certification then we cannot say they are open universities right so consider these questions no doubt they allow uh, the persons or the learner to get education at any type and affordable prices but when we talk about open it mean open now just consider these question are the courses at your institution free or at least subsidized do students have to come to campus to learn can students learn anytime or are there restriction as to when courses are available can student construct their own programs from modules across faculties can student take as long as they like to complete their studies are the unit transferable to other institution like credit system is your course content released with an open license anybody can tell me any of the question any one question you can ponder upon and discuss with me if you are in a institution 
are there any courses which you have developed and you make it open for everyone globally or at least for our country hello ma'am yes ma'am i am afraid that this answer will be no okay um and then uh, i have heard university of people yeah uh, which runs uh, you know all those questions which satisfies your answer under that university yes, of that people. that mean that is open university yes so oh, those we have igno also everybody must have heard about the igno indira gandhi national open university yes that is open <laughs> yes when we talk about these universities these universities are open but to some extent mm-hmm. like uh, no is bar like uh, easy exit and entry and exit affordable education but when we talk about the open when we say open word that must satisfy all these questions that is here for the self reflection activities ma'am maybe yes. the private institutions or the deemed universities we can, we are working in so yes. uh, uh, providing a free course would be a difficult thing but as uh, we learned about moocs so in our specific in in our course we can uh, offer a mooc uh, apart from the regular classes and the, because all those things have to be abided by the ai city and ugc norms like uh, presence of the students within the campus or the class so part of that the, those moocs or add on things can these things can be the additional things that we can o- offer to the students exactly as a very right so because here in our scenario everything is open it's not possible we cannot allow the student to sit at home and get the degrees because when minimum uh, standard or minimum re- recommendations are there to attend the classes so so far some like if you talk about mooc because nowadays if you are working on a mooc for a swayam portal it has its own significance like you get some marks or for promotion cases you uh, need api scores at that case you develop some mooc but our institution allowed mooc as a oer that's not necessary because recently i have uh, developed one mooc innovative pedagogical strategies for gifted and slow learner that was basically under unesco chair oe for better world that was international project and i made that mooc on a canvas platform and i made it open for everyone uh, that was free of cost uh, that that was available for everyone and 1400 participant opted for that course but that is basically under the project oer for better world so that is not compulsory it is for obligatory who want to do that course and there is no credit transfer on that basis because if we talk about swayam mooc here credit transferable is transformation is possible we can transfer the credit for a particular subject but that's also not approved by each and every university so now there is one more word before going into the deep discussion of oer you might have heard about the open courseware ocw so open courseware it basically mean and because it's it's little restricted because it is basically concerned with the particular course offerings it means sharing the open content that is developed specifically for a course offering so that is basically uh, for the purpose of a one particular course like mit open courseware Uh, if you go into this website uh, mit there are various various courses which are available and that is basically called as open course where now open course where can be syllabi that could be a lecture notes presentation slides assignment lecture video all related to a course it mean uh, the resources which are available digitally on mit uh, website or that organization but it is related to a only one particular course like science or a mathematics that is called as open course where now uh, if you know about the elon musk he invokes the spirit of open source he basically believe that applying the open source philosophy to our patents will strengthen me according to him if we uh, you know if we uh, propagate this or if we uh, believe that we can apply the open philosophy we can o- uh, remain open our patent it will strengthen our uh, particular company so it is uh, it's not like it will uh, uh, diminishing the quality or diminishing the standard of that particular company so this idea was invoked by the elon musk 
who was the advocate of the spirit of open source but he at that time talk about the open patent only not about the digital resources so now if we talk about open educational resources which are our basic topic oer this is the logo which has been given by unesco i think you all must familiar with the unesco so this is the logo and oer common we will visit the website now uh, you can upload your uh, content there and under the cc license so according to oer commons because oer commons uh, it's like uh, they have mentioned that oers are teaching and learning material and that are freely available online for everyone to use whether you are an instructor student or a self learner so it means open educational resources are for teaching and learning process and if we talk about the examples of oer that include full course mean there could be a full course on a particular subject that could be a oer also it's not like there is one video that is oer full course could also be an oer course modules syllabi lectures homework assignments are also there quizzes lab and classroom activities pedagogical material some games today we will also play one game that is under oer license or cc license simulation and many more resources contained in digital media collection from around the world so when we talk about oer commons it means online educational resources which are available online and which is open globally now if we further define uh, according to wiki wiki educator open educational resources are teaching learning and research resources so that consider oer in three modes teaching for teaching purposes you can use for teaching purposes for learning purposes and for research purposes that reside in the public domain now it is very much important because when we say public domain the opposite is a copyrighted if that is under a copyrighted that will not be oer if it is on a public domain then we can say it is a oer it is an oer but sometime what happened it is on a public domain but with certain restrictions that are basically under the licenses different kind of licenses or have been released under an intellectual property license that permit their free use or repurposing by the other and open again open educational resources include everything like material any kind of material module video animation audios and everything uh, the another definition is it is teaching learning and research resource that is either in the public domain basically the same now uh, if according to wikipedia because wikimedia and wiki educator is also a, an open educational resource you can add it i think everybody must know that uh, when we talk about wikipedia anybody can enter and anybody can edit the content on the wikipedia according to their knowledge so sometime uh, it is not uh, considered as a very reliable uh, kind of resource because anybody can make changes on the wikipedia so there is wiki educator also uh, so open educational resources these are free and openly licensed educational material and we can use it for teaching learning research and other purposes right now when we say open now these four uh, these five r's are very important because here we are talking about open educational resources all those that resources we are which are open and when we say open it mean that must satisfy these five r framework reuse it mean we can reuse the content for example i am giving my content on any topic like any mathematic topics or angles and i made a one proper module and textbook or we can say animation and i put it on the oer commons or any platform and i provide the license cc it mean i allow you to change or to use or reuse my content and you can make the changes according to your need like the content is mine but if i am giving you the right or it's if it's open you can reuse it you can reshare it you can mix it but with certain restrictions so five r framework is very important under oer that is reuse revise remix because revision is must to update the content from time to time remix we can mix the content redistribute we can distribute the content retain we can retain the content with on our laptop or a computer or with us because there are uh, some site which prohibit you to take screenshot and download the pdf that is not open 
if there is any type of clause that you are not able to take the screenshot or you are not able to access the file it means that is not under open access so that must satisfy these five frameworks reuse revise remix redistribute and retain now these are types of open educational resources we have already gone through Uh, different courses course material module learning objects collection games could be there journals could be there quizzes assignments some software so this is oer commons so i'll go through the website so are you able to see the screen this is oer common is it uh, visible to everyone yes ma'am so yes so this is a, a wonderful website you can discover the content here you and one important thing is you can add your oer i'll show you how first of all it is important to create your account here you have to create and by adding your con content on oer commons you are uh, it mean you are there in the community of oer common network so there is one more uh, organization non profit organization i'll show you you can be the part of that also if you are truly interested in oer and cce uh, gn network then you must know about these website and you must have the accounts on these websites and the first thing is you have to make the account on oercommons.org note this now discover if you want to discover you can discover the resources i'll click over here so you can have a look so these all are open educational resources you can freely use it you be use it because there is no restriction you can have a look over here at the bottom you can see oer commons and this is the uh, license has been given it means that is under some restriction cc by ncsa so we will discuss all these types of licenses little later after this this topic so these are the resources like applied science approximately 8100 resources are there art and humanities i'll click on education so these all are oers open educational resources you can have a look so these are the resources information fluency routine procedures you can also upload as per your convenience and introduction to teaching online and here is a detail of the material type what type of material it is who is the author and what, uh, when this data has been added or this oer has been added here likewise we have collections there are some collections of a you can have a look over here so these are the collections different resources are there steam garden based learning So these all are under OER. All are adult education and open licensing resources. You can have a look over here after this in a hands-on experiment uh, sessions. Then there is providers hubs. There are some hubs. And uh, for the Gundias, there is a provision of my groups. You can add or you can join some groups. Now the most important thing for you is add OER because if you want to add your OER. for example you are uh, under the process of making any video uh, which is entirely yours you can add so open author or submit from web like you want to create a resource on this website only like oer commons or you want to add link because i used to have my youtube channel i posted some video there and i add link here just to make it under oer open educational resource so you can click on any open author create resource or add link add link is easy because you can create your website you can create your youtube channel or you can just add link here and continue but it's not like it's approved immediately if you are adding some link here then you have to wait for example i'll add some i showed and i'll add some content so that you can know the procedure Uh, it need one day to approve your uh, that content so because your content need approval so for example i have this uh, video which i have previously there so share copy 
because this is my channel so i can easily uh, copy my link from here and put it on a oer commons you can have a look over here for example i am pasting and continue now i have to add resource url url i have added and it is asking me for title that automatically fetch from that copy link from youtube or overview attribute this resource authors like i am the author dr dipika kohli so i am showing you how you can add your resources so these are the licenses so you can have a look if i use public domain anybody can use it share it if i use cc by then there is some restriction that you have to uh, attribute me for this resource so these are some subject area you have to click over here like uh, what is the basic subject area for this particular video or a resource for example i am clicking on the education educational level this is for uh, college level or a professional level material type it is a uh, it's like a video so illustration simulation guide you can say it's a interactive language it's in a english now educational so this wise you have to add the information and continue after continuing so have a look submit a resource preview and submit resource so this type for uh, whenever you submit your resource to oer common the uh, you have to you should replace your cover image you can replace or you can use this this image that is by default now i'm going to so i have submitted this submit for review i am going to click over you can have a look over this is a green button i am submitting it for review now oer commons organization will review it and get me back so i have added the resource but that is not uh, approved yet whenever they approve that content because they, here you can see status status is pending so status pending mean it is yet to publish either the con content or this video so oer common review this video from my channel and get me through email or here the status will be clear or recommended right so this way i have i will able to add my oer so i have already added some of my video i'll show you so you can have a look so i have contribute i have four groups and six saved resources so these are my earlier uh, submissions research approaches and tools and techniques so all the record will be saved on you to your account so you can contribute to oer common submit from web open author or creator group i hope this is clear to you because this is most widely used and most easy to use but the thing is you must be ready with your content so it approximately takes one or two days to review your submission and publicize on this website so i am coming back to the presentation so this was all about oer commons that is one platform to put your or submit your open educational resources now come let's think why oer can anybody uh, share your perception why oer why do we need oer why need to submit the oer what is the ma major reason behind it anybody you can unmute i think uh madam anybody can access our material which we are uploading on oer and yes. which, which will be freely accessible and uh, the student who need um, very good content we can provide such a good content to ourselves okay now the another question arises uh when we talk about the good content how student can judge that it's the good content if it's on a youtube channel we are not sure about the reliability and validity of the content right 
for example here i am making uh, any youtube channel and i am adding my content uh, regularly uh, can you say it's open educational resource yes any that video can be used by anybody can be forwarded by anybody but that also i need some uh, to give some licenses youtube video also requires some licenses like if anybody want to down, download and make any editing ch changes or edits but can you say that all youtube videos that are under oer that are reliable and valid the content is reliable or a good because we are using the good word na what do you say uh, how we can check the reliability can't judge that. yes hmm. uh, we can't judge that because uh, if we see uh, more than 5 or 6 video that time we can understand that the out of 5 or 6 video only one video is very good one it will provide exact information which we needed so the, yeah we can't judge that very good so in that case what we have to do is we have to guide and provide the links to our student after go to that open educational resources by ourselves it's not like we are just saying the students to go to this so resource and re this resource and that may be a just wastage of time so why oer first of all it is like ma'am has already told like it improved access so anybody can access to that content worldwide and no doubt it's of a lower cost no tuition fees is there low text cost are available now if we talk about uh, with the help of oer those who are providers they can collaborate they can re reuse the existing resources and nowadays new markets are coming up new academies are coming up with a, a different kind of course where different kind of resources and that is available to everyone and moreover it also uh, important because we have a diversified curriculum because we have the flexible curriculum so the students can take the opportunity to use these oer which are available online now obviously because everybody can afford it everybody can use it digitally but the question because we have to be taken into consideration the quality aspect of that open educational resource because when we say open educational resource anybody can use that resource anybody can uh, upload your resource on any media but the thing is whenever we have to recommend that resource to our student we need to be very particular about the quality reliability and validity of that particular content because it's not always that all content is beneficial for our student that may lead to the wastage of the time and moreover these oer support the learners because if i am not clarifying uh, with any topic i go through the different videos or the content or the pdf and i read that and i clarify my topic or that particular concept now there is one declaration uh kindly go through uh, these recommendation very carefully because you will need it the world oer congress held at unesco paris on 2022 june 20, uh, 2012 the major recommendations were first of all it is very much important to foster awareness and use of oer i think the thing is that that our teacher our students are not very much aware about the oer resources available like somebody has written the swayam many of the students are still not aware about the swayam mok no doubt teachers are uh, acquainted with that and there is e parshala that there is epg parshala is there shod ganga is there academy is there there are various platform khan academy also is there and there are various academy who are running the youtube channel free or free of cost like for a competitive examination and so the need is to foster the awareness and the use of oer among the masses the next very important facilitate enabling environment for the use of ict because if we talk about oer in terms of digital resources we need ict tools then reinforce the development of strategies and policies on oer that was recommended by and you know in india also uh, even our nct national council for teacher education that has also uh, took initiative during the pandemic period to create and to drive the oer and put on on the on that the website and then very important to promote the understanding of the open licensing framework if we know about the oer but we are not clarified about the licenses it is of no use we cannot use the oer properly because we need to know about the different licenses which are available for our while using the oers 
then it is very much important to support the capacity building for the sustainable development of quality learning material which i have already talked about the material need to be uh, it should be in a qualitative terms foster strategic alliances for oer like uh, oer for better word is there where we can submit our proposal for a oer developers like recently i have already told you i submit one mooc that was under oer for better world uh, unesco chair so you can also submit your proposal as a oer developer where they assign one mentor to you that is from the uh, that field that, uh, that person uh, must be from some uh, expert field uh, from uh, global from anywhere so i have launched the mooc under dr ramesh c sharma under oer for better world unesco chair then encourage the development of adoption of oer in a variety of languages and it is one of the most important thing because most of the oer are available in english so we need to develop and adapt the oer in <coughs> variety of languages okay if you go on through the national policy recently which has been launched uh, that will implement it uh, is there any clause related to language our national policy 2020 uh, talked about language have you heard about anything or you read about anything anybody from you <coughs> it is one of the most important documents uh, its policy anything related to language anything you heard about it one or two three lines there is a emphasis on mother tongue ma'am yes so when there is a emphasis on the mother tongue it mean Uh, the time has uh, came up when there is a need of a language teacher it mean there is a need of translation of oer into different languages because most of the oer are available uh, in english or other languages but not in the regional languages so that is the main barrier because oer not available in the regional languages so uh, in a coming years uh, that will be in a very you know in a demanding situation when the teacher need to translate the oers in a different languages so and it is very much important to encourage the research on oers right then facilitate how to find how to retrieve and how to share the oer then open licensing which is very much required whenever we have to use or reuse the oer now if we are talking about indian initiatives these are some of the initiative you must have heard about this after the session during the hands on experience you can go through these uh, uh, websites and have a look over here that is national program on technology enhanced learning that is nptel sakshat that was in a 2006 consortium for educational communication by ugc epg parshala even e parshala by ncert is also there open resource because open textbook are there that is in a pdf form open audios images are also there a club here virtual learning environment institute of lifelong learning national institute of open schooling national repository of open educational resources and creation of e content on fermentation technology these are some of the example or some initiative there are many more now very important if you want to create your oer we have just visited one oer common that is one way to submit or to create your oer through link or by adding the content there these are the main step you have to take an into consideration first of all you have to plan the oer like on what sub on which subject you want to prepare your oer create your oer whether you want to use existing oer reuse it or you want to remix it uh, what what could be the audience Uh, what could be the strategies what could be the tools which you are going to use for that oer next is very important pick a tool you have to pick a tool to launch that or to put that oer like open author press book git books book down is there like oer commons are there youtube channels are there you need to plan the tool also then very important make accessible if you are saying it's oer or it's under particular license you have to make it accessible to everyone like you have to make sure that people of all abilities can access your content it's not here that you restricted that content after a certain period of time that it could not be considered as a as a oer then use other resources you can use the other resources like some images 
ऑडियो विजुअल एड सम कोर्सेज यू कैन री यूज वेन क्रिएटिंग यूर ओ ई आर लाइक इफ यू वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट मूव कॉन गिफ्टेड स्टूडेंट यू कैन यूज माई ओ ई आर ओ दैट मूव दैट कुड बी अनदर रिसोर्स बट बट अगेन यू हैव टू टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन द कॉपी राइट इशू और अ क्रिएटिव कॉम आर लाइसेंसेज देन शेयर very important how you have to share the oer you have to choose the platform also digital wpi oer commons canvas hai moodle is there repository uh, repositories are there collections are there then time to time you need to update and evaluate that uh, oer so these are very simple steps to create an oer just keep in your mind whenever you have to make any video for the student what you have to do you have to plan you the content you have to chalk out the learning objective you have to pick the tool like it's on uh, which tool you are going to record the audio and where you are going to post your uh, video and audio then you have to share the through links or any platform like youtube then time to time you need to update and evaluate your oer now how you can support open like if you are really the supporter of open education or you are you want to be in the world of open education then that thing must be into your mind create oer when you find a gap only prepare oer if you find a gap if oer is already there on a particular subject you don't need to create again and again so for that purpose you have to go through the existing resources and check the gaps if there any in that particular course or any resource then you can update the existing oer if the restrictions are not there you can update that oer then let colleague know that you use oer your colleague must know that you are using oer because it helps to disseminate the information they also uh, get aware about the oers share your syllabus as oer share editable formats write an open peer review article now i think uh many of you have heard about academia have you heard about academia yes ma'am what is the purpose of academia that is a wonderful platform it's it's a resource based subject you can search over now if you subscribe to that academia uh you continuously receiving a mail nowadays from academia there is academia letter what has written there they, they ask are, us to write uh, small articles yes and one more option they are providing us the two option no i got this mail only ma'am okay sorry uh, three options are there first of all we can upload our research articles for more accessibility and you know with the help of academia you can reach out to the masses and your work can be publicized or the recognized and there is one analytics also there analytics i i'll show you academia those who are not aware of that i'm saying your one is research gate where you get yeah. the analytics yeah, yeah. is so reading your exactly. paper exactly uh, how many reads were there for a month or us Ex- last week yes yes, yes. exactly same baljit yes may be waise hi hai academy mein bhi same hai but uh, there are sector. yes you can publicize your articles in a pdf format so you can check your like i have already uh, you know add my article there and there is analytics also and uh, they mentioned who are your followers reading history is there you can go through the profile of your account so like these are some of the article which i have uh, put on the academia so just you can download it how many readers are there 143 views are there how many of them refer these they can also cite your uh, papers so this is also open access journal so this is also come under the category of open now what i want to sh- uh, tell you that there are three provisions like first of all you can upload your papers research paper quality papers make this uh, thing that paper must be a quality paper second is you receive a mail from uh, them that you can also contribute to the academia letters a small article third is you can review the article of other authors so there is one more opportunity like you review the article you can become the reviewer of academia and you can submit the review <coughs> on the basis of your review 
uh, that letter will be accepted or rejected by the academy and one more thing there is a uh, also provision of discussions you can if you have a fellow teachers or a experts with you you can encourage discussion on your papers you can invite them for the uh, discussions on the paper they can suggest you what outcomes are there what could be the problems and what uh, other changes could be there in the your articles so i hope th this is again uh, i it's clear like open assess journals so this way we can uh, write an open peer article reviewed article for the academia edit a wikipedia and i have already told you you can also be a, a wikipedia or wiki educator i am also the part of wikimedia india uh, now very important before going into the discussion of what is licensing in oer because uh, our next topic would be cc creative commons i am going i am going to show one website to you so this we have done with oer commons kindly note it down oercommon.org we have done with academia so now this is ccgn have you heard about ccgn creative comma global network anybody of you yes ma'am heard about creative commons so creative common it it's basically a non profit organization which advocate the cc licenses right so this is the official website of cc creative commons and if you want to share your work you have to click here you can share your work use and remix what uh, blogs are also there you can also donate for their noble cause because every year every month they are organizing some event a uh, glam events are there different events they are holding so they are the advocate of open licenses creative commons so we will come back here again after the oer now this is open educational resources unesco because unesco has initiated the movement for this oers so you must and i think there are uh, various millennium sustainability goals uh, which cover under uh, this uh, oer so unesco what we do this is their work expertise their work their partners and their resources and why i'm showing you this website because they have advocated the use of open educational resources so this is the unesco mandate in oer you can go through it later on so this is related to these are the goals quality education gender quality there are different uh, goals 17 goals so these are some of the material which are available here some uh, this is one document open educational resources policy cost and transformation this is open educational resources program so this is in a pdf form you can download and read it if you are interested in open education resources so this is by unesco this document is very important because it talked about oer i think you have also heard about col commonwealth of learning commonwealth of learning is also work uh, for this unesco oer so oer platform so this is a wonderful resource you can go through it you can find out the some uh, platform of oer you can find out uh, the information related to oers what oer uh, expert network is there so for that kindly note down this website unesco.org so there are some recommendations for implementing you can join us this is career fellowship and internship these are the resources available like world heritage these are the open resources which are available on the unesco website so now next is very very important oer world map kindly note down this resource i'll put it in the chat box this link so you can also go through the link so you can also click over the link i have added the link there 
so this is called as oer world map so you can search like uh, you have to create the account here you have to log in through your account you have to set your profile here like i have already set my you can add your oers and that uh, is visible to everyone like for example search the oer world map so the, uh, here i'll click on the dr ramesh sharma uh, he was accorded as a number 1 in asia for oer development and contribution so this is the profile and then you can you can check the categories like for example select category teacher then like uh, we used to uh, check from the scopus journals likewise there we have to need to add some entries category teacher or learning resource oer anything you can have a look over these documents secondary sector higher education region like which region you want to opt for select country first of all canada italy france netherland i am going to click canada then select region british columbia so these are some of the resources available so that will tell you the whole information when this course was available two truths and a lie online media literacy for young adults so have a look so this is a common platform a worldwide it's called as oer world map if you want to have a more look you can take a tour here first let's let's explore the data already added to oer world map so this is the organization and it's a group of people sharing collective goals if you will uh, share your content you will be the part of this organization service a permanently available offering that provide functionality and value to its user because it's basically for education purpose person is an individual who relates personally to oer community like i have already told you if you are really interested in oer you must know about the oer commons oer foundation wiki educators oer world map and creative comma network this is a project this is basically a event on a particular location story related to oer and published stories tools very important the tool that can be used to produce and distribute oer you can use this uh, you want to create your oer you can use the option tool publication you want to publish uh, that is basically for website blog post this is their policy and some collections and collection i am going to click over the, click over the collections so there are various uh, for uh, that purpose first of all you have to filter everything the, these are the filters so there are various uh, different categories and different tags are there you need to click the different categories or filter that now find if you want to find now just have a look you want to find the organization person service publications projects add if you want to add you can add from here you can add as a organization as a service as a project event story tool publication this is related to oers so this is basically oer world map now one is oer foundation so this is a oer foundation so that also you can register your interest here if you are uh, interested in any kind of activities that will direct you to oer u so i am also the uh, spoc of this oer u new zealand Uh, you can help them to update their website you can help them to create course you can join the oer you can apply for the membership for the uh, mous 
so this basically oer that uh, is working for the uh, oers open educational resources and that is under cc common licenses you can use the content so how it works so you need internet connection i hope you everybody must have you can go through these videos i am just sharing you the different videos and different content or website you can go through on a hands on experience online learning with international classmates so study for academic credits so there are various opportunities available for about oeru you can have a look the oeru makes higher education accessible to everyone coordinated by oer foundation and independent non for profit organization it, its network of institution offer free online course for students my institution is also part of this uh, oer foundation so these are oer partners worldwide so you can have a look unesco is a part of it ambedkar university delhi uh, then col so these are the institutions from across the world which are the part of this oer foundation so this is my college logo established in 92 because i am from khalsa college so this will direct to you that at particular this is my college information because we are the outreach partner of that foundation so likewise you can also encourage your institution to be a part of because here the courses are available and very nice courses we are for one year of study these are the courses that is termed as lida 100 learning in a digital age these are the free courses and you will get certificate for these these courses new courses are there so these are the featured courses there are some future or current courses micro courses are also there so these are some courses for self study these are self study courses you have to sign up for this and you can start the learning so you can encourage your students who are really uh, very keen to learn something new they can go because certification is also provided by oeru that is for professional development basically so these are some courses some certification courses by by oeru are free yeah yeah free everything is free because it's open education resource foundation it's lida lida course first of all you have to uh, go through the basic courses these are the basic courses you encourage your students these learning in a digital age available for self you can register your interest to them and they will get you back or through email or through uh, various media so open for independent study so just you can start the learning from here so i'll click over one course digital citizenship i also registered myself for some of the courses now if i want to like course code is lida102 available from 4th april 2018 duration is 2 week it's a micro course and assessment is of 20 hours credentialing a course credit learning in a digital age you can have a look who was a developer why then emeritus professor these are the developer of the course uh, they are from different reputed universities and you can start learning from here so this is a digital citizenship course like you first of all you have to log in or register then you have to they will introduce you to syllabus or the modules these are the announcements and course feed you can have to go to registration link so first of all you have to create your uh, login through your account so i'm going to directly login I'll try again. Oh. Because some due to some security purpose, sometimes I used to change my password after some period of time.
so login successful okay so here you can have a look when you log in i am not enrolled into this course so first of all if i want to go to the course i have to enrolled register there was a one link of registered first of all you will register then you will get an email then you can start learning so this is a course guide which guides you overview guiding framework aim syllabus is there list of challenges resources interactions course announcement course feed these are the two option where interaction can be poss uh, is possible learning pathways how you can move toward the next steps like these are the courses assessment is there certification and qualification options is there how to certify participation so there are rubric also available startup is also there start here about site map you can start from here so what you have to do is first of all you have to register to a particular course wherever your students are you are interested it's not only for students being a teacher you can also get the certificate from them and you can add to your professional uh, apis they counted or not that's another issue but definitely it would enrich your biodata so these are all about oer foundation so i hope this is uh, clear now uh, also add it in your diary or note it oer oeru.org this was oer foundation next is so wiki educator so again this is a uh, one of the form of oer open educational resource uh, you can also the part of this wiki, wiki educator login or you can uh, first of all you have to request for that account because i am also i am already the part of wiki, wiki educator so i am easily open it so there is one option of request you have to click over here so wikieducator.org this is the main page the purpose of wiki educator is clear so what i am showing you it's all oers open educational it's a foundation or a commons or a educator so wiki educator is an evolving community intended for the collaborative planning of education projects so you can plan collaboratively throughout the world so here uh, what happen you can find a good uh, mentor you can find a good Uh, academia for the collaboration of any project so you can develop a free content on wiki educator for e learning you can work for open educational resources you can create you can submit or funding your proposal there is a networking which are available to fund your proposal so for that purpose you need to identify you need to find out some uh, good collaborator who can collaborate with you with different countries so so funding is also available but uh, you need to be very proficient and advanced in the oer learning so these are the featured partners of oer use so how you can uh, involve in it get involved there are so many ways like create you can create a wiki educator account very simple it's a free because it's a wiki it's a free free of course you can create your account like then you can it it helps you to specify your project or create your own projects so you can also join their discussion by opting the mailing list you you have to subscribe to their mailing list they will send you the uh, an, uh, continuous announcements or the feeds so you can have a look i have click over the that so these are the groups so i was also the part of wiki educator groups ask to join group if you want to ask uh, join the group you can ask them so here various different educators are there you whenever you have to ask them to join you have to tell them the description and reason for joining and by joining the wiki educator you are able to collaborate globally uh, you will be able to you know uh, it is basically for your recognition at the international level or a global level so while who has uh, launched the course on li uh, digital citizenship he is also part of this digital uh, wiki educator so savi she is savi is she is basically a, a you can say a coordinator of uh, hub india chapter india for ccgn savitri ma'am 
so these are all the collaborators so you can join the groups so wiki educator is a a, a good platform so now you can join a cluster of interest here you can join anything any group like eit resources because it's as per your interest mooc for accessibility partnership you can join anything so you can add it because uh, i am the wiki educator so i can make addition here i can view the history who have made uh, changes here then so there are different uh, options to involve yourself in a wiki educators keep your country or country news page current you can also add your country details so donation or contribution if you want to give some uh, seek donations so there is become a wiki ambassador it's easy you can also be a member of wiki recently wiki media has uh, launched a uh, you know 20th celebration they have uh, celebrated the 20th anniversary so they have launched a program or a little competition for them i have also uh, the participant of that and they uh, send me a one uh, a cup along with a one bag as a recognition because i was the participant of that celebration or anniversary 20th anniversary so likewise you can also be a part of that uh, wiki different uh, programs or the competitions the competition was we just have to send uh, some pictures so i what i did i uh, made a cake with my family and i clicked the picture i sent to the and uh, submit to the wiki media and that got selected for uh, that prize so you can also do that that basically Uh, provide you a recognition there you are the you can be the part of that wiki world so become a wiki neighbor you can also become a neighbor so if you can uh, you will uh, closely have a look over the different avenues you can be a part of this oer world community forum is there chat services are there wiki educator face, facebook group is also there so i hope this wiki educator is clear to everyone so just have a look so that that is basically in collaboration of oer also these all are working together like if i am the member of wiki educator i am the member of oer u oer foundation oer for better world also i show you uh, one more uh, website that is oer for better world where i have my project with them so international online mentoring program so dr ramesh sharma is a recognized mentor and a expert mentor there in this open education for a better world online mentoring program so what is the purpose of this uh, open education for better world because it is a network of uh, different communities of different ma uh, members who are a believer in open education and uh, every year uh, they ask for some uh, projects uh, where you want to uh, prepare uh, create some oers that can be in a form of mooc or any mooc you have to submit your proposal and after submission of your proposal they will review the proposal they will get back to you they will let you know that your proposal has been accepted or not then after that you are able to uh, launch your oer under their uh, this open education for better world unesco chair i'll show you one uh, picture so this is uh, whenever you are uh, this project is uh, accepted Uh, you can collaborate with your institution like uh, khalsa college of education collaboration with open education for a better world uh, launched a four week mooc course like if you are interested under this unesco chair right and you can also issue certification to your members now i show you the mentors so the mentors are mentors mean like if i am submitting the proposal to them as a developer like i want to be a oer developer under open education for a better world unesco chair i need somebody who can uh, help me who can guide me for that i need mentor but that's not our choice basically they uh, allot us a mentor as per their need as per our interest or our areas because all these areas are as per that uh, 17 sustainable goals of unesco 
so these are uh, the these are mentor coordinator cherish so these are the mentor across the globe you can have a look rohit nazma so till now i have worked with so indian mentors are also there so just have a look so these all are the mentor from uh, different countries uh, you can get an opportunity to work with them like uh, indira ma'am she is very active in this oer and moodle from kbr foundation so she is from india and i am also associated with indira ma'am for uh, online internship programs so uh, here uh, yesterday the inaugural address was by uh, ramesh sharma ji he is also a mentor here for this samir so it means these all are the mentor who can guide you who can help you to prepare your uh, oer develop your oers so for that these are the application i will show you the projects and the applications so Uh, till even 2020 they have updated till 2020 mine was accepted in 2021 soon they will uh, be uploading ours also so who can apply this is the application process you can have a look form for developer if you want to develop because uh, because the last date was december 13 this time i have uh, because uh, last year Uh, i did uh, i create oer on innovative pedagogical strategies for gifted learner this time i applied for innovative strategies for fostering creativity among school learner let's hope for the best so this is form for developer and this is form mentors but for uh, to be a mentor you firstly you must be a developer hopefully next year i will be a mentor so this work under the different hub coordinators so like uh, this oer for better world uh, basically work through a hubs like hub asia r is a hub asia so these are the member so advisory board i'll show you the hub asia so projects so they after the complete successful completion of the uh, these projects like under the them oer or mooc uh, they held a session like that's called as oer eduscope and after that they publicize on their uh, website so these are the hub asia africa some courses which has recently been launched and completed i'll show you the course of uh, uh, our very close uh, expert you also know him very well yesterday you attended one session of dr parghar sir ji his course is also there because last year he has developed the mooc under cooperative uh, for cooperative learning strategies he, he uh, uh this is a cooperative learning strategies i'm just uh, i just want to show you because you can easily uh, you know uh, associate with it because yesterday you attended the session of agar sir so last to last year he had launched this course cooperative learning strategies as a learning center pedagogy so these are the comments or the files now i'll show you the developers so this is the uh, list of developers that is uh, not i think updated it's updated till 2020 i'll see if so it is a like it's a good platform to associate globally and to have your recognition globally like see i'm also the developer my name is also there online it mean they have updated right so i hope you also want to be a member of this oer developer community because it is providing an opportunity to you to do a uh, project and that will also help you to uh, step into the you know swayam uh, for the swayam because uh, that will provide you the opportunity to interact globally so mentor could be from anyone 
now right now the no uh, this is close application are close every year they open the applications so this is basically about open education for a better world so this is all about open education open educational resources so till now let's have a little recap till now we have gone through the open educational resources concept oer commons oer foundation wiki educator oer world map uh, which was very important oer for better world unesco oer recommendations now i am moving forward to licensing now because it's very important uh, we are talking about oer open educational resources though these are open but that requires some licenses it's not like that for example i have prepared one course and i put a lot of hard work and somebody else can easily use it and put their name and use it commercially i will not allow them what i can do i can al allow them to be a part of my oer as a member or a learner or he or she can reuse it but not for commercial purpose for that purpose we need some kind of licensing so when i talk about licensing because a uh, cc is basically a license which is most commonly used nowadays now when i talk about license license is a permission or a consent from the copyright owner to use the copyrighted work if you want to use any kind of copyrighted work this license provide the permission or a consent from the copyright owners like if i am the owner you need a license to reuse it and it specify what can and what cannot be done with the work for example if i am the oer creator i specify the license it's a copyrighted then it will not be a oer because oer is a open but i can use cc creative commons so keep this in your mind whenever we talk about oer open educational resources here we use the different type of licenses that is called as creative commons now the next first is a license license mean it's a permission or a consent second is a copyright it's like a form of intellectual ownership i think you everybody must have heard about intellectual property rights if i if i am writing some article if i am uh, doing some research i have the right to protect my work and i am the only person who have the right over that work nobody can use nobody can uh, plagiarize the work uh, done by me without my permission that is a strict copyright then life uh, licensing this is actually repeated licensing is it's mean obtaining the permission or consent from the copyrighted owner to use the copyrighted work like you have to obtain the permission through email you have to contact uh, contact that person who is the original creator of that content now kindly anybody can tell me about these symbols what these symbol represent these are three symbol c with a circle c c with a circle c with a circle but uh, it it it's a, it's a horizontal line it's a block what it signifies anybody c in a circle is for copyright yes when a uh, cross is that is that cannot be shared no okay fine that cannot be shared right next she says anybody else this is a common c three c double c but double c, double c. A cite, a citation can be done copy and citation can be done okay fine yes Uh, cross copy prohibited. Yes, very good. Uh, C cross means public. Uh, it is for well, public only. Yes, yes, yes. You don't need any copyrighted licenses. So very nice. Yes. Thank you so much for your responses. Here, C. It it's basically a first is a copyright. Copyright mean you cannot use this consent content or a work without uh, the permission of the content creator. so this is a strict it's it's a very you know restrictive kind of license that will not allow you to use any uh, material or a content it's a copyrighted and the next it's for a public domain it mean though it was a copyrighted but they added a slash or they cut it out it mean it's a it's on a public domain you can easily use it 
you don't need permission it's a copyrighted but you don't need permission to use it because they have mentioned that it is available for a public domain and that is the part of open open resource and this is which we are concerned with cce mean creative commons like that we need to attribute the original creator so we can use uh, the content so we can use the work but we have to attribute the original creator of the work so these are the three major licenses first is copyrighted very restricted this is with little restrictions like you can use but with attribution this is the most freely used like you don't need to uh, like you can freely use it it's on a public domain like wikipedia it's on a public domain now if we talk about uh, licenses there are various type of licenses or wikimedia commons have over 42 million files i'll show you the wikimedia commons so there are various uh, i think you must have heard about pixbay pixbay here the free pictures are available that is also part of oer open educational resources so this is a wiki media commons i just have a look so there are variety of resources available for you so these are uh, they have mentioned if they have mentioned creative common attribution share alike it means this is the one kind of license which you have to and that all regulate under this creative commons so you can also be a part of wikipedia uh, wikipedia commons by logging or enter your uh, you have to create an account for it you can also add your contributions so i am also the uh, i have also the part of this you can add your college pictures your locality images so there are various images in lacs are available which we can you can use freely but with the uh, but taking into consideration the uh, that licenses so this is called as wikimedia commons so this is a pixbay pixbay is also for free images if you want to any image like i want on uh, angle so it's a, it, it took it has a angel okay cells for example i need a question mark sign for my presentation so these are the images and you can use these images because these are free to download for example i am clicking on it so that also comes under open educational resource it's a free download free download but again you need to check the license i can download it i can use it but they must uh, no attribution required for it means for this image i don't need to acknowledge or attribute the and it's also use you can use for the commercial use you can freely use this image but if somebody add the cc license then i cannot use with that again it's no attribution required so there are various pictures where attribution is no huh? now you can have a look this is not a free they need the rupees 345 so this is not open educational resource so pixbay or i stock photo is a basic platform where you can have a lot of pictures some are free some need some attributions so you must use it now i'm coming back to the presentation so there are many licenses this is creative commons now what creative commons because i am talking about creative commons it's basically an internationally active non profit organization that provide free licenses for creators to use when making their work available to the public for example i am creating my video i am creating my uh, article and i am posting it or sharing it through some online media at the end i have to mention the license if i i write c that mean copyrighted nobody can use it 
if i use the license cc because it's open educational resource then definitely we cannot use copyrighted or public domain we can only use creative commons so creative comma is basically for the purpose of those resources those work which you want to provide to the masses so every time a work is created such as when a journal article is written or a photograph taken that work is automatically protected by a copyright and copyright protection prevent other from using the work but cc provide some rights but with some attribution that is a free license and this free license is provided by the creative comma organization which is ngo these are the common licenses we will discuss this is cc by this is the most freely used and most widely used license i also use it for my mooc cc by mean you can use it but you have to give the attribution by her mean attribution by this is a like a author or a creator by mean you can use this content if you are giving this content for example you are the creator and you are giving this first license what i can do i can use your content i can use your image in my course but i have to attribute you i have to cite you i have to mention that this person has given uh, perfectly cite cc by mc i'll discuss one by one in a uh, coming slides you cannot use for commercial purposes you cannot uh, make a duplicate copy you cannot you can share a like as it is so these are the some licenses but this is from most free to most restricted last is most restricted license and this is most free license so 1.4 billion cc license work have been done so far till 2017 so this was the range of the work which has under cc licenses these are the major platform for sharing cc work youtube wikipedia is there coursera is there vimeo is there canvas is there moodle is there so creative commons movement around the world now creative commons is everywhere in india also there is one chapter of india and i am also the member of that chapter this is country that use cc search the most in 2017 these are the countries america australia ireland so these are now i'm showing you some uh, resources for the open education which also involves some licenses working under cc like i'm showing you that resources which are working under cc licenses plos public library of science creative commons wiki like we have wikipedia or wikimedia there is creative commons wiki these are the open licenses before going into the discussions i'll go through the again ha huh. now this is creative commons which i have talked about like uh, it's a non profit organization under which you can use the cc licenses now i am showing you the they are working for cc glam here is basically a, a galleries museum archives global network now i am going to click over the global network so these are the members of cc so cc work with the help of these chapters view all the chapters regularly they have meeting they have programs the what is cc chapter chapter basically mean a particular location or a country right so there are different countries Ch request a chapter wise frequently asked question are there cc chapter in your country i am going to click over our country So actually they directed to me uh, to one group because i am the part of that so i'll show you the chapter india so this is not for you because there are some questions this is a list i search for the list of in india so i have already told you that switri singh uh, she was also the wiki educator she is the main coordinator of cc india so we are the part of cc india cc is a creative common chapter india so switri singh is a chapter lead and uh, subhash is the representative of this group 
If you want to contact the chapter, you have to contact uh, the Savitri ma'am. Now I am going to show you the members. You can only uh, check this if you are a member of that Creative Commons. I'll show you the members of Creative Commons. These are the international members from UK, Tanzania, Brazil. I'll show you the chapter India again. So so the purpose of this is this is chapter india more information i want to show you the members actually of from india so if you want to be a part of this cc you have to uh, fill this application membership application but for that you need to vouch when somebody from this network will vouch you vouch you you mean recommend you they will recommend you to be a part of this group otherwise you cannot be a group part of this group so i am searching mine so here you can have a look i am i am the part of this ccgn from india so very few people are from india who is the member of ccgn this is my bio and indra ma'am and shushmana ma'am is also and they vouched vouched me during my application process they helped me to part of the, their recommendation is necessary to be a part of this because it's a international organization so i think this cc is clear to you the purpose of this uh, cc is Uh, to this uh, this is for the advocacy of the creative comma licenses so these are related to creative commons licenses now i'm going again so you can have a look over the chapter governance regional meetings time to time we have meetings uh, open education platform is there so this is open education platform join you can join them or uh, they have a slack also slack is a platform where you can uh, communicate with them i am not going to open because there are many conversations there related to this creative commons so uh, the purpose of this is this will help you to uh, make a close association association with the global community on uh, uh, for the purpose of achieving the goals of sustainability sustainability right now i'm going back to this powerpoint so these are the licenses first is cc by this license basically uh, let other distribute remix to we can build upon your work like my work you can use but you have to give me a credit right second is cc by md this license allow for redistribution commercial and non commercial as long as it pass along unchanged like you cannot make any change you have you can redistribute it commercially also non commercially but you cannot change the content and you have to give me a credit next is you can remix the content tweak the concept, content you can make it non but uh, that that should be for a non commercial purpose you have to be very specific with these licenses these symbols these symbols are very important before you are launching any oer and first one is most widely used we are basically use this ccby if we are working on a oer so attribution share alike attribution non commercial so you can have a look over the different licenses uh, i have already told you the freedom this is a least restrictive this is a public domain c cross to most restrictive last is the most restrictive and this is a copyrighted this is a on a public domain fixed way i have already showed you unsplash is also a uh, it's open uh, images are available uh, you can uh, get music for videos if you want to add some video music to it. videos you can go through boomerang i think everybody your kid must use boomerang wikipedia free culture win creative commons searching oer 
how you can search by oer repositories these are the men i have already uh, uh, searched everything oer commons open course library these are the other uh, resources you can search from here qdiki that is also very common for different subjects science textbooks are there i math as my open math open educational resources consortium globeinfo.org for business school courses creative commons platforms you can search from google also uh, there is also option of licenses in google search open learn this is the most widely used mit open course pairs barriers so these are some of the barriers like whenever we have to use the oer these are the barriers like there are not enough resources for my subject too hard to find what i need not comprehensive not used by other faculty member like we have 200 students i am using but others are not using not high quality not knowing if i have a, a permission to use only that, uh, you can be uh, aware about if you are known about the cc licenses it's not current or updated too difficult to integrate into technology lack of support from my institution and too difficult to change or add it so this is one article open educational resources in india study of attitude and perception of distant teacher a view uh, that is basically because your university is associated with uh, distance education so open educational resources revolutionize the distance education so this is the evaluation criteria how you can evaluate oers that should be comprehensive that should be accurate relevant clarity is there so that should there should not be any grammatical error proper modules should be there organization should be there so if you want to acknowledge the work of oer creator how you can you have to give the title author source and license how this way you can acknowledge the oer creators this is a handbook for the educators open education resource educator handbook these are some website so hands on experience now in the next activity you can do this activity you can create an oer select a subject or course for your oer any subject and write a short description of the oer you will create second step two is decide on three types of material you will incorporate like images video slides decide upon uh, decide upon it you can also search from the uh, net and properly attribute three is you have to format your oer according to your need like text then image then video or ppt step four is to gather the content like you have to copy the links or citation then final step you can select a creative comma license like cc by cc share like whichever you feel comfortable and share the oer with your colleagues uh, first is you have to create the oer second is find an oer you could use in your teaching make sure it is of a cc license then you can evaluate it you can cite it by using creative comma wiki so now it's your turn to find oer you can find out the oer i have already told you so many websites so many resources of uh, under that today you have to do this work to find out the best oer for in your subject uh, also it is very much important you can evaluate the oer there are existing oers there are some rubrics uh, that is available i'll click over it that with the help of that rubric you have to evaluate the existing oer which are already present so i have click on the oer so almost i am in the end of the session so it is under the google drive so you have to click over the so rubrics are available on the net so this foundation i have already gone through the foundation lead facilitator i have also already shown you wiki educator i have shown you thank you so last but not least this is a game so i am going to put a link i hope the ma'am has already provided you the link click on the link and play the game it's in the chat box you don't need to obtain a cc license you just have to refer the cc license from cc common
UNESCO and all other. Yes, sure. I'll provide the all the links to ma'am. I'll provide the PPT to ma'am. So, are you able to access the game? So, this is a play. How to play? High score about about this game is basically related to CC Creative Commons license. How to play? These are the guidelines. You have to click over the play. Choose level one. So, are you doing it? Ma'am, are they able to access the game? Yes. Okay. Chandrakan Kumar, thank you for reconfirming. So, you can choose the level. So, just read the instructions there. This, this game is under OER, Open Educational Resource. It's a game and it's on a CC license. So CC BY, original author must be create, credited. This is CC BY. So you just have to so submit. That was close, okay. So it was close for some reason, I think. Skip, you can skip it. Okay, so link is with you. You have to log in to play this game. So I just want to show one more uh, document that is OER in Asia at last. In Asia, like uh, because our country is also in Asia, so there are various initiatives with examples. That is, uh, this document was uh, prepared by R.C. Sharma sir and uh, it's an amazing document because in March 4 to 8, Open Education Week was celebrated. Past events are also there. So that uh, this document is talk about OER movement in Asia. Like in Afghanistan, they have launched free and open education resource for Afghanistan. Armenia repository is there. Bahrain, Ministry of Education, Open Data, Bangladesh, Open e-learning, Bangla platform, Cambodia, China, they have Victor's Multimedia Chinese Teaching System, China Education and Research Network, Beijing. So likewise, uh, the initiative of India I have already shown you before. So I am quickly run through this. India, Telangana Open Education Resources are there, Karnataka Open Education Resources are there, NROER, Pratham Books, NOS, IT for Change, Bangalore, then Indonesia. So this document, I'll share you the link. I'll share the link and you can have a look over here. So this is all about Open Education or open education resources movement across the Asia. So with this, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yes. Thank you, madam, uh, for this wonderful session. Uh, now it is open for uh, question answers, a uh, few question answers, if at all. Yes. Uh, if anybody, want, anybody wants to ask any question, they can unmute and ask the question. So I am putting all the links, ma'am. Uh, I have posted in the chat box. They can use Madam, I have one question. Yes, ma'am. Madam, I have one question. Yeah, sure. Uh, Madam, uh, our research papers already uploaded by uh, some uh, uh, editors uh, yeah. that are online. So those papers we can upload as OCR. In academia, you can, no, that cannot be up, uploaded at OCR, that is not open education, they, they cannot use it, that is under copyrighted, because if you are submitting your article 
to a particular journal that, that will be your copyrighted i think they have already uh, filled one agreement form with you if it's a scopus or a good journal Okay. You can upload. You. you can publish it for the public view, but not other than not use it, not remix it. Okay. Uh, madam, if we update or we upload a one OER either through link or you said that okay, we can add a resource. then it is up to our wish that uh, we what kind of uh, uh, common uh, license per uh, common license we put either by this by or nc or nd exactly. so it is up to us only yes ma'am it's up to you it's upon the creator of the oer you are free to use any type of license what you have to do is you have to mention that li uh, that uh, license uh, on the bottom of the article or whatever the uh, link you are submitted okay. you so have to mention have that this is the license this is the license you have to only appropriately mention the type yes. of license you are free to use it okay thank you uh, okay i think uh, the questions are over uh, so let me conclude the session Uh, for uh, by presenting the vote of thanks uh, we are very grateful to our today's resource person dr deepika kohli madam for accepting our invitation and delivering such a wonderful session on oer and creative commons i heartily thank all the participants for joining this session and their active participation i would also like to thank professor dr sf patil director research training and international affairs for his support and gracious presence i extend my sincere thanks to the conveners of this fdp dr raju ganesh sundar director cdoe and dr kirti gupta director iqac for their continuous motivation and support for arranging this program uh, i kindly request to all participants to fill the feedback forms the link for which has been posted in the chat window please check the chat window and fill up the feedback form for today's session uh we will be obviously sharing uh, the exercises given by ma'am on the group uh now uh, i formally declare that this session is over thank you so much ma'am thank you for the opportunity thank you thank you so much ma'am thank you